And welcome once again into the Lon Yop Show. It is Friday. It is June 11th, 2021. Did not have a show last week because uh, Sean invited me to play Dungeons and Dragons. And we had a lot of fun. I blacked out like a quarter of the way through. And the rest of the night, I have no idea what happened. Uh, <laughs> hey, that's just the way it goes sometimes. <laughs> Uh no, this stupid keto diet, man. I I cannot drink the same way that I would normally drink, and uh, I apologize to them lot. for that. Yeah, I apologize to to them for that because I was really having a lot of fun playing this Dungeons and Dragons game. They wanted to try out some new characters and and uh, give it a whirl, and it was fun. And then I, I went to open up a barrel, and I don't know what happened after that. Apparently, we went in a uh. we went in like uh, some tunnels and. We did some more. I was probably playing, I don't know, maybe another 30 minutes or something, but I totally blacked out. I have no idea what happened. So if we ever play again, we got to pick up. They're going to have to reinform me about what happened <laughs> that night. <laughs> so that's what happened last week. Uh, that's why we didn't have a show. I just wanted to take a break. And next week, I'm going to have a vacation. I'm going on vacation, finally. So uh, we're not going to have a show next week either. But... We're here today. We're here now. The Lon Yop Show is live on my personal Facebook page. Uh, the recorded video will then be shared to bitshoot.com, rumble.com. Uh, it will also appear on YouTube. YouTube is not a reliable source for this show for various reasons. The audio version of the podcast. Oh, oh by the way, minds.com. Follow me, John F337. At BitChute, uh, just search The Lon Yop Show. At Rumble, search The Lon Yop Show. You see how it's spelled on your screen. And also, uh, audio version of the podcast will be saved, and that will be distributed pretty much everywhere. Absolutely everywhere. Um, however you can get it. You can even listen to it on your smart speakers. So uh, it is Friday. What's up, Kelly? I got him joining via Skype. I got a stagnant picture of him. He's holding a fish that he caught. I don't know if he kept it, if he ate it, or if he uh, sent it back. <laughs> I'm good. Just had done a lot today, and now it's uh, just time to relax, do a little podcast, and then you went and go cut the grass have, in this uh, hot weather, man. Woof. Yes, yes, it's hot. Uh, I mean, the the summer just started, and it it's so humid. You just, like, walk out of your house, and you start to sweat right away. Got to take three showers uh, a day, man. <laughs> man, it, it's it's ridiculous. It, I said, man, either I'm really out of shape because I don't work anymore, because of my condition, but or it is really just this freaking humid right now. Like it's, it's bad. It's bad, man. And in the uh, afternoons, I've I got a, you know a two vehicle garage. In the afternoons, lately, I've been after it gets past six or seven, the sun's starting to go down. I'll open up the garage and just let that air out because I don't want a bunch of like I walked in it the other night. I used a thermometer, uh, heat uh, meat thermometer, so you know give or take some, but. It was over 100 degrees in there. And then the wall wow. on the other side is in the inside of our house, and we like to keep that in the lower 70s. So I don't want mold building up inside of the wall, you know, from that big temperature difference. Yeah. So I I'm sure it's built fine and, and good enough, and it, this house has been around since the 70s. But still, I mean, I I'll let the thing... I'll open up the, the garage door and just let it air out for a little while. Let some of that hot air dissipate to, you know, it can get to like maybe at least 80 something degrees inside the garage before I close it again and we head into the night. Yeah. That sure can't hurt nothing, letting it breathe. And just get some animals in there to poo and pee on your vehicles or something, but that's about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. but it's, it's y'all don't have any y'all don't have any crackheads that walk the street that can look and and see what they can take out of there. So mm, not in this neighborhood. Y'all 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 be all right. <laughs> Maybe incentivizing it though. Uh, yeah, the beard is gone. The wife told me to shave the beard. Just letting y'all know. She's like, we're oh going on God. vacation. Well, it's summer. I it's hot. You got to shave it. It's too much. I was like, you're right. You can grow it back in the winter. Okay, cool. But you oh got more God, hair on your face than I do man. now. No, I accidentally shaved mine off yesterday. You accidentally shaved it off. You fucked it up. Yeah, I went. 
I went to trim it and I had the wrong guy comb on and mm-hmm. I cut it way too short. And you said, screw I just, it. Like, z- I did, z- I looked down, a big old clump fell out and I was like, oh no, I can't believe this. So I had to cut it all real short. Well, here comes the return of that fast, double so. chin. <laughs> I know. Oh yeah. Yeah. I was hiding mine too oh. with the beard. <laughs> <laughs> At least we got a little cheat sheet with the uh-huh. little cheat. <laughs> and just grow your beard, <laughs> hide that double chin. And then you look all manly and stuff. It's, it's good. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, I'm just opening uh, the app, uh, Facebook, and I see you with the, with no facial hair. Mm-hmm. Damn, you look younger as hell. Oh, yeah. I look a lot younger. That's the thing. I, I put some you more. Look, I got younger. <laughs> you look like a wannabe Vin Diesel. Oh. Oh, I, I heard the women's were rubbing themselves to him, so. I guess that's a good oh, uh, that's a good thing. God. I thought it was back in the day. They that probably don't do that anymore. But back in the day, he was like, wasn't he on like the cover of magazines as like one of the sexiest men or something like that? I'll take that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, but it wasn't you. <laughs> uh, no, it wasn't. Hmm. Oh my god. What? Oh well. Hey, it's a free fishing weekend. I know you got your fishing license, but even if you don't have a fishing license, this is the one weekend a year in Louisiana where you can go fishing without a license, and you're good. I didn't know. I didn't know you can do that. Yeah, take whoever you, your partners. I'm raising my hand, but I, I, I honestly, I can't go. <laughs> I can't go tomorrow. Uh, but I don't. I, know. I need to restring my fishing pole, anyways. But anybody can go. You don't need a license this weekend. Just saying. Oh, that's nice. It is. Yeah, right before, right, they doing that right before, uh, in about a week or two it ends. You got to renew your licenses, everybody, so. Take your partners with you. That's crazy how they do that, huh? They give you a little taste of fishing without so you the go, license. Yeah, so you go buy a license. And then you yeah, go buy it and it's over yeah. in a week and you got, oh, shit, I got to buy another one. <laughs> uh, it lasts a year, but. But, yeah, but if you buy it at the expiration, if you buy it a week before it expires. Yeah. Yeah. That's nuts. Mm Mm-hmm. It should be a year from when you bought it. Yeah. Not everybody everybody ends the same day. Yeah, well. You know, as, as long as it says on the license when you bought it, it should be good for the year. They crooked. Oh boy, they know they know how to call you to get that license back another been another nine fifty real quick, huh? Oh. It's Holy only crooked, it's yeah. only nine fifty. I thought it was like fifteen bucks. Uh on Bill Platt over here it's nine fifty mm. for the uh standard basic fishing license. Oh man, that's not bad. Maybe 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 salt water or something that's more. Hmm. But I mean, you don't catch fish anyway, so. No, I just catch the bug. But if you're going to throw a line yeah. in the water, you got to have one, except for this weekend. Yeah. You can just sit by the water and drink. You don't have to. Hey. You could just leave your pole on the ground. I like don't that. Touch the pole. No, but uh, but if I don't catch, <laughs> somebody got to catch. Because one of my other favorite things is, like, cooking the fish fresh. And I've, I don't catch them, so I haven't even had the opportunity to learn how to clean them. But I probably wouldn't anyways. But I'll cook them. You, yeah. somebody catch them, you clean them, I'll cook them. We'll, we'll cook them son of a guns on the grill. I'll, I'll cook it right on the, on the shore, man. I'll get it done. I like He won't it. put, he, he won't put the bait on the hook either, but he'll well, try to reel it in if something bites. I need a glove. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like to touch that, but I don't like worms, me. I got a whole thing full of worms if you want to put on your pool. I like peaches. I don't oh, like worms. No. <laughs> huh? I like peaches. Man. I hear you. I don't like I worms. I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly, <laughs> today I wanted to talk a little bit about, we touch on the, the Great Reset, but have you heard about what's been happening in Texas with BlackRock? No, I haven't. BlackRock is a company that's been... They own, like, probably most of the property in the entire world. And what they have been doing recently is they have just been buying up all the new developments. Like, all the housing developments they keep building, all these 
all these Chris Ryder commented butthole worms. So I just <laughs> he broke my train of thought. <laughs> but they've been I don't going. Break <laughs> they've been going in and buying all these all these developments. I'm talking about they've been going in and buying entire neighborhoods of brand new developments, so people can't uh-huh. buy them. And they've been paying like twenty to fifty percent over asking price when they buy the whole neighborhood. And I guess the end game is just to have anybody who's in the middle class and lower just to rent. So if this keeps yep. going on, and and mo- uh, there's it's not only BlackRock. There are several corporations doing this, and the it, the more they're going to buy all of this, all of these houses, and. You won't be able to buy a house anymore. You're only going to have to rent. Your landlords are going to be these big companies. And the other thing, you won't be able to build either because you see what happened with the price of lumber and all the the price of materials just in the last few months. Uh, I know someone who was trying to build a really, really small house for less than 200000 trying to build brand new. And they told me it was going to be almost four. Hundred thousand, you know, uh, not from from two hundred thousand to four hundred thousand, basically double price. Uh, they told Ooh. him because of the price of the materials, and he's like, "Well, I, I can't do that." And they're like, "Well, we can't build it. Uh, you might as well just wait, and hopefully the price of materials goes down." But that's that's what's going to happen to the middle class. Uh, I'm telling you right now. Number one, this is not financial advice, but I'm just going to tell you, if you don't own a home right now. Or any property, and you're renting, but you do have money to potentially get one, it may uh-huh. be a wise decision right now to just go buy something. Go buy a property and a home and just deal with it and have it now so you can have it because these corporations are coming and they're buying up everything. You can't build right now because it's too high. And you don't want to build a mobile home. You don't want to. Well, you you can end up paying three hundred thousand dollars for a mobile home. You know, the by the time the materials and the everything, everything, the inflation buy, is at five percent now, man. Buy a mobile home already built now. Hey, Just buy it. Hey, I wouldn't shock me if these corporations start buying up all of those things too and start putting them on land and just renting them out. I think the. We're going to look into the Great Reset. I, I think ultimately this is the theme of the show that I want to do tonight. Uh, by the way, Cuba Libre, that's what I'm stirring here. Again, same thing. Still on keto because we're going to the beach next weekend. Uh, I got to look good. And then after that, uh, I can start having sugar again. <laughs> <laughs> Dad bought again. Oh, yeah. So uh, for now, let's let's look into the Great Reset. Have you heard about the Great Reset? No. Essentially what it is, the World Economic Forum, uh, a bunch of powers that be, right? Uh, Big companies, these billionaires uh, get together. And the idea with the Great Reset was it was the 50th annual meeting of the World Economic Forum. They labeled it the Great Reset. And I'm going to pull up the Wikipedia article uh, right here so everybody can see what I'm referencing. Now, Wikipedia is biased, super biased, um, very left-winning. I mean, the, the left wing has control of everything in the media, from uh, radio, TV, everything, from every news organization that you read news from, even Wikipedia. Uh, Chris Ryder said, by the way, USB board, when he built his house, was uh-huh. uh, $9.99. Ten months later, USB board is forty dollars. Oh Lord! That's a, USB forty dollars for a sheet of USB. That's crazy. So uh, it, it, it's that's what I'm saying. The the price. This is what they want to do. So they have the the Great Reset meeting. That's what they called it. It was held in June 2020. It brought together high-profile business and political leaders convened by Charles Prince of Wales and the WEF. Um, World Economic Forum, with the theme of rebuilding society and the economy in a sustainable way following the COVID-19 pandemic. So basically what they said was they wanted to use the COVID-19 pandemic as a springboard 
more or less, as a way, just use that as an excuse to reset everything and rebuild the entire world uh, in their vision, the way they want. Now, what they say, uh, WEF Chief Executive Officer Klaus Schwab described three core components of the Great Reset. The first involves creating conditions for a, quote, stakeholder economy. The second component includes building a more, quote, resilient, equitable, and sustainable way based on environmental, social, and governance uh, metrics, which would incorporate more green public infrastructure projects. The third component is to harness innovations of the fourth industrial revolution for public good. Now, that's kind of big and broad. What are they talking about? Well, you see the word equitable in here. And if you know... Mm -hmm what that word means equitable means everybody goes to the finish line crosses the finish line at the same time right okay it means it doesn't mean equal opportunity it doesn't mean everybody gets the same opportunity at the starting line everybody has the best running shoes they can have everybody has the best athletic equipment they can have and you you run the race and who finishes whatever they all have you know what i mean everybody has equal opportunity nobody's cheating and you all run the race that what is that's yeah. equality that's not equity equity means everybody finishes at the finish line at the same time no so if uh, somebody has um, – somebody's a really good runner, right? You uh -huh. give them some crappy shoes. Somebody's a terrible runner. You give them some better shoes. Uh, and somebody is a terrible, terrible runner. Well, you put them, you know, 20 feet from the finish line. Somebody's a really good runner. You put them 50 feet from the finish line. So they mm -hmm. all can finish at the same time. Equity means, regardless, if you have 70% of your population as women and the other 30% are men, equity means at a job, it's still going to be 50-50. 50% of your employees are going to be men, 50% are going to be women, regardless of who applies. Let's say, I, I know this personally. I know how this works personally. Um, a radio station, a country radio station, okay? Okay. It would have, in an equitable country radio station, if we're doing equity, half of the employees, or they would have to be, it would have to be split. Uh, we'll do it really simple. Half would have to be white. Half would have to be black. I mean, if you want to take in Asian Pacific Islanders and Native Americans and uh, Asian Americans and, and start mixing in that, then everybody would have to be equal. You can't have more employees of a certain race more than the other. OK, it would all have to be equal regardless. Uh -huh. Well, let me ask you this. How many African Americans and Asian Americans and Pacific Islander Americans do you think are applying for a job at a, a, a country radio station that plays 1970s country music? Probably hardly any. <laughs> I know. So Both how places, how do you make that equitable? Zero. How do you make that equitable? So, in other words, you can't because you have too many white people there, you have to hire a minority. But if how can you hire them if they don't apply for the job? Exactly. That's they not there. Want to do it? But so the only way you can do it is by force, and it ends up getting into communism, and that's basically how this great reset is going to work. New now, world order. This has been called a conspiracy. Let's go to it. We're going to continue with the Wikipedia article. Let's look at what they say. I, I read through this earlier i did my research they call in this a conspiracy theory yet they never mention in this article what the conspiracy theory actually is about so let's read it a november 2020 article said that the great reset conspiracy theory was the first in the presidency of joe biden um the article in the economist said that the united states has a quote rich history of conspiracism due to its anti-government apocalyptic religious and entrepreneurial traditions according to the article Oh, they're, they're going with QAnon, blah, blah, blah. Uh, they don't even talk about what the conspiracy is. They just call it a conspiracy theory in this paragraph. And you can go look it up on Wikipedia. They never tell you, they never flesh out what the full conspiracy is. Um, mm -hmm. Trump promoted the QAnon conspiracy, which 
combined a number of fabrications into a single narrative. Uh, when the COVID-19 pandemic combined with the presidential election. Oh, oh so you mean, you mean like uh, the lab leak, right? That was a conspiracy, right? That COVID-19 actually leaked from a Chinese lab. Except in the past few weeks, well, now we've known this for a year, but in the past few weeks, oh, you know, now this is this is what's crazy. You heard about that, right? That now they know the lab. It actually probably did come from a lab, and Trump was right this whole time. You heard about that? No. Okay. Wow, man, where have you been? I don't. Um, <laughs> I don't. I don't, want, I don't watch the news or read the news. That's actually probably a good thing to do because. Trump was saying there's a good chance it came from the lab and they called that Uh a conspiracy theory for almost a year. And now the intelligence has leaked and it looks like it probably did come from the lab. Now, the media is covering their butts. Now, for the last few months, they've been I mean, the last few weeks on this because it came out like a week or two ago. They've been covering their butts. We covered that on like the last broadcast or second to last broadcast I did about how uh, they had to retract a lot of their articles. That was calling it a BS conspiracy theory. Said it was debunked. Mm. Well, it ends up not being debunked. You got it wrong. Well, now look at how they're covering. I'm pulling this up. I just put Trump was right about lab leak. And there you go. Now they're trying to say the lab leak theory will never vindicate Trump. This is how they're, they, they cannot let him get a victory. He was right about it, but they can't let him get the victory. Telling the truth about lab leak theory wouldn't help Trump. <laughs> they're telling, oh so they're God. saying it even could be the truth, but it still won't help. They will not let him get a victory here. And they won't, they won't uh, like admit they were wrong. They, they were, well, they and did. just like, oh, uh, everything to not make him look good, you know? They did say. They didn't say that they were wrong, right? What a lot of these organizations said was that they didn't do their job of journalism and investigate anymore because Trump said it and everything Trump says is a lie and they just didn't believe it because Trump said it. Oh. They admitted that. But, I mean, oh, my God. Like, (sighs) so, okay, so that was another thing, right? And that was one thing Trump was right about. The media was wrong, and it took a year. Well, what about this? The Lafayette Square thing. You remember when Trump walked across uh, from the White House? He went to the church. He held up a Bible, and it was supposed to be like a photo op or whatever, and they had to clear out the crowd. They end up uh, doing tear gas on people to move the crowd away because they were unruly. And they said, uh, Trump tear gas people just so he could do the photo op with the Bible in the church. Do you remember that? No. Good. Uh, I'm glad <laughs> you don't remember it because it was a bunch I of mean, so, it was no. a bunch of BS. It wasn't true. It was lies. Man, so much stuff went on. I mean, it's it, hard to keep track of all the. So I'm pulling it up here from NBC News. Trump photo op at church wasn't why Lafayette Square was cleared. What the real truth is, and we know this now, and again, I'm just going to scroll, and you can see all of these headlines on the screen. Police did not clear Lafayette so Trump could hold the photo op. That's not what happened. What happened was these Black Lives Matter protesters were already there during the day. They tried to burn down the church two or three times. They were vandalizing everything. Their protests got violent. They didn't even know Trump was going to even go to the church that day. They had no clue. They were clearing out those people to put up fences to protect the church and protect that area because they were already being unruly and violent. And then later on, Trump decided to go and do a photo op. It had nothing to do with Trump. And now they're all admitting it. Trump was right again. These people, these, these, they're lying to you. They're lying that's to you. Why I don't, uh, that's why I don't even watch the news. I don't even try to read it on Google or anything, what's going on, because most of the stuff is, is lies. I mean, why would I want to read lies? So when we talk about this and they're saying, oh, the Great Reset, that's a conspiracy theory. Well, what's the conspiracy? What, what is wrong about it? The theory is a bunch of these people, the rich that control these big corporations, want to use COVID-19 
as a way to reset the economy. They already admit this. I mean, this is what they're admitting. And they're trying to enforce socialism. So, uh, like, I know Ben Shapiro stuck up for BlackRock. I'm going to uh, touch on this for a second. Ben Shapiro, very conservative. He took up for BlackRock, said, look, that's capitalism. You know, the company wants to buy up all the property. As long as they can buy it up, let them buy it up. That's capitalism. No, but they're buying it up for the wrong reasons. They are buying yeah. it up, and what they're going to do with the property is not capitalism. What they're going to do with the property is socialism because the price of rent in capitalism the price of a product is determined by supply and demand, right? It's de is determined by the market, right? Mm -hmm. Well, if this company buys up all the assets, buys up all the products, they determine the price regardless. Supply and demand doesn't determine the price. They determine the price. They basically have a monopoly on the property. Yeah. That is not capitalism that is socialism that's basically government fixing a price well it's not government it's an independent uh company yeah you don't think these people that own these companies also aren't in the same bed if not actually in governmental positions it's another form of socialism so uh, you can read this i'm not going to read through it i don't want to be here all night but you can read through it. They call it a conspiracy theory, yet they never tell you what the conspiracy theory really is or why mm -hmm. it's a conspiracy theory or what's going on. So you know what we're going to do? We're going to X out of all of this, and we're going to go to their damn website. Let's go to the World Economic Forum, weforum.org, the World Economic Forum, backslash great dash reset, the great reset. All right, I'm just going to read it to you, okay? This is not people writing about it, okay? This is not conspiracy theorists writing about the Great Reset. i got to take a big sip before I start reading this. This is what they wrote themselves. This is what they wrote themselves. The Great Reset from the World Economic Forum. This is Look, you can look at it. It's on the screen right here. This is their official website. This is not people from the far right writing about this. This is not conspiracy theorists writing about this. This is the World Economic Forum themselves. It's on their own website. There is an urgent need for global stakeholders. What does that mean, global stakeholders? Kelly, what do you think that means? Hmm. Millionaires and billionaires, and people that yeah, own these trillion-dollar corporations. Every country. Yeah. There's an urgent need for global stakeholders to cooperate in simultaneously managing the direct consequences of the COVID-19 virus. You know what a conspiracy is? A conspiracy, yeah, uh, by definition, shit, let's look up the definition. We're going to look up the definition of a conspiracy. Conspiracy. Definition. I know I misspelled that. It was just a typo. A secret plan by a group to do something unlawful or harmful. That's what the conspiracy is. Or the action of plotting or conspiring. That's what a conspiracy means. A bunch of people getting together to do something that's harmful. Potentially unlawful, but at least harmful. That's all conspiracy means. Is that not a conspiracy? Let me read that sentence again. There is an urgent need for global stakeholders to cooperate in simultaneously managing the direct consequences of the COVID-19. So a group of stakeholders are going to cooperate simultaneously. Well, John, if they're doing it for a good cause, it's not a conspiracy. Okay, whatever. But it's, a, it's the world leaders cooperating simultaneously. Is that not what that sentence says? <laughs> Yeah. Okay. To improve this, exactly. they say to improve the state of the world, the World Economic Forum is starting the Great Reset Initiative. They're starting it. It's not a theory. 
They are starting it. It is an initiative. It's not something that they're thinking about doing to improve the state of the world. Look, you can't. Let me scroll down so you can see this. To improve the state of the world, the World Economic Forum is starting the Great Reset Initiative on their damn website. Y'all want to show me where the conspiracy theory is? That's the first two sentences of their website. All I did was read you the first two sentences. Where is the theory? theory. It's not even a theory. They're telling you what's happening. They're telling you. You're right. They're telling you what's happening. And they're telling it's not a conspiracy. It is a conspiracy. Global stakeholders are cooperating simultaneously. They're not hiding it. They're telling you. So here's the context. You don't even, you don't even need a, uh, um, a conspiracy. They're telling you what they do. They're telling you. Why would you need a, a conspiracy when somebody's telling you what they do? And they're doing it. <laughs> the context. Yeah, they're doing it. The COVID-19 crisis and the political, economic, and social disruptions it has caused is fundamentally changing the traditional context for decision-making. The inconsistencies, inadequacies, and contradictions of multiple systems, from health and financial to energy and education, are more exposed than ever. I agree with that. Uh, It was chaos, and our, our dysfunctions are more exposed than ever. Uh, amidst a global context of concern for lives, livelihoods, and the planet. Leaders find themselves at a historic crossroads managing short-term pressures against medium and long-term uncertainties. The opportunity. Let me scroll up so people can read it along with this. As we enter a unique window of opportunity to shape the recovery... This initiative will offer insights to help inform all of those determining the future state of global relations, the direction of national economies, the pri- the direction of national economies. They want to shape the direction of national economies. Is, is that not what that says? Yep. They want to determine the future of state global relations. So partnerships, that doesn't sound bad. They want to determine... The direction of national economies. The priorities of societies. They want to determine the priority of a society. Do you get to choose what's a priority in your society, in Cajun society? Do we get to choose? No, they want to choose for you. They want to determine. This is in their own text. I'm just reading it to you, what it says on your website. Uh, They're determining... They want to determine the nature of business models and the management of global commons. You know what the global commons is, the economy? They want to determine that. They want to determine. Let's read. As we, this initiative will offer insights to help inform all those determining the future state. Determining the future state. They want to determine business models. So they want their hand in everything. Everything. They want socialism. They don't want. You're not going to own your own business. You're not going to own a house. You're not going to own a business. You're not going to own anything. The government, the state is going to own it. They're going to regulate prices. This is they. That's what they want. They want full blown socialism. The government will tell you how much something costs, whether it's ridiculous or not. Oh. Wow. This is what they want. Drawing from the vision and vast expertise of the leaders engaged across the forum's communities, the Great Reset Initiative has, set, has a set of dimensions to build a new social contract that honors the dignity of every human being. So you can read more about it. It's there. We Forum, weforum.org. Great Reset. So this brings me to, to this thing. Look, I hardly frequent... Tiger Droppings. It's not at tigerdroppings.com. It's an LSU Tigers um, forum. Now, I've heard about this story, but I wanted to go through the forum because I thought it would be cool to go through different people's comments and read what they have to say about this topic Uh, because there can be some arguments back and forth and different insight. So two days ago, I believe it was, this thread was started at Tiger Droppings, 
And the title was, oh, he sent me a text. What is this? He says, oh, you don't hear me? Oh, you got it now? <laughs> yeah, my bad. I got it. You didn't have to go potty again, huh? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> There's a reason why we started late, folks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Before we get into the Tiger Droppings thread, I want to read what uh, Chris said again. He said, reset economy equals high gas prices and a birdhouse costs $1,500. Price lumber to build a birdhouse because birds making nest in my shop Fifteen hundred dollars to build the birdhouse because he wanted to get the birds away from his wow. shop. Wow! Just build it yourself. Y'all loving y'all some Joe Biden right now? Y'all loving him or what? Y'all loving him? Oh yeah. Well, yeah, he but he's can he can build it himself. I think that's with the price of him building himself. Where he he has to pay for the lumber, Kelly. He has to pay for the lumber and the metal pipe. He has to pay for the materials. Unless he goes cut down a damn tree in his house, uh, you know. I don't know if he's got a tree to cut down. Get you a chainsaw. That's all I can say. Do some woodworking. Yeah. Get some wood glue and hope for the best. Damn. That's Paul Ball. $1,500 to build a damn birdhouse. Lord. All right, so I want to go to this. Uh, the title, as you can see, is BlackRock is buying every single family home they can and paying 20 to 50 percent above asking price. So there's a Wall Street Journal article about it. They link it right here. So we're going to open that up in a new tab. I'm going to pull it out just so I can show you where it's cited. If you sell a house these days, the buyer might be a pension fund. Yield-chasing investors are snapping up single-family homes, competing with ordinary Americans, and driving up prices. Okay? If you go try to buy a house, you have to compete with pension funds who have way much more money than you do. They're paying 20 to 50% above asking price to buy the home. You've got no chance. No chance. This is starting. It's only beginning. This is going to continue for a while, but it's only beginning. This is from the Wall Street Journal, folks. This isn't a conspiracy theory website. This is the Wall Street Journal. Um, we're going to go back to, to Tiger Droppings, which quotes, this post quotes some of the stuff from the Wall Street Journal. They just linked it. I just wanted to show you. This is what it says. A bidding war broke out this winter at a new subdivision north of Houston. But the prize this time was the entire subdivision, not just a single suburban house, illustrating the rise of big investors as, potent, as a potent new force in the U.S. housing market. D.R. Horton, Inc. built 124 houses in Conroe, Texas, rented them out, and put the whole community, Amber Pines, at Foster's Ridge on the block. A who's who of investors and home rental firms flocked to the, to the December sale. The winning $32 million bid came from an online property investing platform, Fundrise LLC, which manages more than $1 billion on behalf of about 150,000 individuals. The country's most prolific home builder booked roughly twice what it typically makes selling houses to the middle class an encouraging debut in the business of selling entire neighborhoods to investors. They're not selling. Um, oh, there we go. I got to, we started getting some more comments in. I got to go back. Uh, got to go back uh, to the comments. And so we got some comments in there. I'm seeing, I'm glad y'all are tuning the in. That's where the money's at, renting. <laughs> so but yeah so they're gonna these companies are gonna rent it out but with the price of everything going up and you try to buy a home and they pay they pay 50 percent over asking price who's gonna compete with that you're trying to buy a thousand dollar home a hundred thousand dollar home okay you try to buy a hundred thousand dollar home 
you, you're already stretching your budget, but you say, I, I, if we can get it for $100,000, I think we can afford this. It's a little small home, you know, maybe two bed, one bath. We can do this. Uh, I'll save money. We can do this. And they're like, oh, $100,000 home? We can make a lot of money off of this. Screw this little guy just trying to buy his own house and his own property. Uh, you know, we'll pay, we'll pay one five zero 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 zero. You know what I mean? <laughs> They'll pay fifty percent yeah. more. Well, you're just trying to get it at a hundred thousand or or a hundred thirty uh, thousand, whatever it is. They're gonna pay. They can pay fifty percent more over the asking price. You're trying to get them to lower the price. You don't even want to pay asking price. You know, the middle yeah. class don't want to pay the asking price. It, this is starting. If they really do this on a grand scale, if you're not upper middle class or rich, you're not going to be able to own your own property. I'm telling you right now is the time to go buy. If, if you don't have property and a home, you better go get you one. Because yep. eventually and, and already right now, you're going to you're already you're probably going to start to be competing against some of these. They're doing it in just a few places, but it's going to be a big thing. This is the new thing. Um, quote, you have to be permanent capital competing with a young couple trying to buy a house, said John Burns, whose eponymous real estate consulting firm estimates that in many of the nation's top markets, roughly one in every five houses sold is being bought by someone who never moves in. One in five. Wow. Quote, that's going to make U.S. housing permanently more expensive, he said. The consulting firm found Houston to be a favorite haunt of investors who have lately accounted for 24% of home purchases there. Investors slice of the housing market grows as it does in other boom towns such as Miami, Phoenix, and Las Vegas, among properties priced below $300,000 in decent school districts. So the middle class. The middle class is what they're attacking here. Limited housing supply, low rates, and a global reach for yield, and what we're calling the in institutionalization of real estate investors, has set the stage for another speculative investor-driven home price bubble, the firm concluded. There's a Twitter thread about it. He linked here. I'm not going to link to Twitter. Uh, but the quote is, so who is BlackRock? Only the world's largest asset manager and the leading proponent of the Great Reset. They're looking to redistribute, get this, $120 trillion, the entire wealth of the world's middle class and poor combined several times over. As an example, a 124 new home neighborhood was bought in its entirety in Texas. Average Americans were outbid to a tune of $32 million. Homes sold at an average of 20% above listing. Now the entire neighborhood is made up of SFRs. What are SFRs? Single family rentals. Now your, your potential lower to middle class homeowner is positioned to be a permanent renter. This matters because for the lower and middle class, owning a home is the most major part of any financial success and future upward mobility. Because when you own a home and property, it generally uh, increases in value. Now you're just renting. You can't even buy an asset that increases in value. This wealth redistribution, and it ain't rich people's wealth that's getting redistributed, it's normal American middle class salt of the earth wealth heading into the hands of the world's most powerful entities and individuals. The traditional financial vehicle gone forever. Home equity is the main financial element that the middle class families use to build wealth. And BlackRock, a Federal Reserve funded financial institution, is buying up all the houses to make sure that young families cannot build wealth. There we go. There we go. Yeah, Chris says it's a seller's market. I know the interest rate is is lower than it's been in decades, but you still can't compete because they're coming in. They're backed by the Federal Reserve. You know what that means? If they can't afford it, they just get more money from the Federal Reserve to pay it. You're not outbidding other people for houses now. You're outbidding corporations to buy a house in some of these areas. 
Maybe it hasn't hit Louisiana yet, but it sure hit Texas. It's hit Miami. It hit Houston. Mm. You can't buy a house in Houston. They're going to pay 50% more than asking price. When you and I try to go buy a house, we're trying to get it below. (laughs) And then you try to get the home warranties and all kind of stuff. They don't even have to negotiate. These companies go in and, oh, how much they're offering you? (laughs) We're not even asking for a home warranty. We're not asking for any type of anything. We don't even have to go look at it. We don't need a termite inspection and nothing. We'll pay 50% above asking. Give it to us. Yeah. Good thing we bought when we bought. <laughs> That's what I'm I'm saying. Um I'm just saying if you can buy now, buy now. Get you some property. Because the the goal of the great reset, you will come on. I was trying to type this. Oh, I'm typing on the wrong keyboard. Yes, I got two keyboards here, folks. You will own nothing and be happy. This is a great reset. This is the great reset. You will own nothing and you'll be happy. The great new reset. World order. You, 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 world order. Control. I even read that they're trying to put like a uh, Bitcoin could end up being like uh, the the global uh, currency. What? Well, the Bible well, yeah. already talks about it. It's gonna they're gonna have a one uh, they're gonna have a one world currency and all that. Well, that they already talk about stuff like that. Trying to have that. Well, number one, we're already at. I don't want the image search. I just want. Let's pull up the articles because I just want to show you. Uh, Does it mean it's no? Gonna it's, it's, tomorrow? They say no, okay. But... Reuters Reuters try to did do a fact check on this, and the World Economic Forum does not have a, a goal that it says that. Okay, the World Economic Forum didn't say that, but there was an article that said that that was yeah. talking about what they were doing. Um, oh. but anyways, so. I I do want to get into some of these comments later. I don't want to go too late into this show. Uh, and again, I'll be on vacation next week. Uh, Kelly, what was the point you just brought up? Because I thought it was interesting about the new world. Uh, oh, some, the global currency. Some people believe, yeah, global currency. Well, that Bitcoin might end up being that. It could be. And look, I do have money invested into Bitcoin because. Uh, Inflation is at like 5%. Uh, U.S. inflation is highest in 13 years. This price has surged 5%. It was like 4 point something um, last month. It jumps to 5%. Inflation, I mean, that's why that's why lumber costs what it does. I mean, your value is being devalued. The dollar is being devalued. So if you have, I don't know, $10,000 in the bank, as long as inflation keeps going up, I mean, it's going to cost you $10 for a gallon of milk. It's going to cost you $40 to fill up your vehicle eventually in gas. So you're going to burn right through that. It's stealing people's savings. Uh, minimum global tax. <laughs> I like that Kristen uh, said that. Um and a waiver for Chinese. Uh, inflation is is kicking our butts. It's happening. It's happening. So the prices of everything is going up. Inflation's going up. You can't build a house because you're not going to get squat for what you can pay for. And all of these companies are buying up homes. Just telling y'all, you'll need to buy some property. Um, let's and let's pre- go ahead. You- and your president can't walk without falling down. <laughs> you think his he wipes his wife, own butt, dude? His, his, his wife got to clean his butt. He can't even wipe his own ass. <laughs> he can't talk without a teleprompter. He can't even talk with the teleprompter. It's bad. Uh, 
Viagra, Viagra don't even work no more. I know we can talk about Kamala Harris and the total embarrassment of what happened in Honduras, <laughs> but we're not even going to get there. I just wanted to read some of these comments here. Uh, they are also in Hoover, and I'm not too excited about it. So this is a guy um, in who lives in Hoover, Hoover, Alabama, Baton Rouge native, and he's talking about BlackRock being in Alabama, and I guess because he knows it, they're out there buying up property in Hoover, Alabama. Black rocks matter. Nah, it just doesn't roll off the tongue. Okay. Collapse is coming in our lifetime. Uh, I live in the Houston area, and a neighborhood near me sold a huge chunk to Black Rock. Seems like a bad trend. These frickers are pure evil. You think the cries for socialism are bad now? They will only get louder and have greater credence lent to them if these big companies are not reined in. Um... They're putting the takeover efforts in overdrive. It's open now. They are telling us flat out, and still people are oblivious. Like we said, we read the website, right? They're telling us flat out what they want to do. Uh, Just looking at at, at some of these. They are going to destroy, destroy all... I guess special middle class neighborhoods and move section eight into them, thereby creating an even bigger strain on inventory. This is a Democrat's wet dream happening before our eyes and it's not happenstance. You remember on the the Obama administration, they wanted to put section eight housing like everywhere. This is kind of like the end game. This is just their way to do it as well. Um The bad thing is the rising prices of the rental units make it very difficult to cash flow. You're, t- you're taking real estate and making investments solely off future price. Some average Joe investor like myself can't compete with that. I'm glad I got in when I did and I was able to scale as moderately as I have. It was an amazing move by them. Yeah, I mean, they're going to make a lot of money. And the average... Yep. Uh, the somebody, Uh-oh, Kristen, are you on here? <laughs> Are you on Tiger Droppings? Are you posting on uh, on here somewhere? I don't know. Are you on this thread? We don't know. Um, <laughs> the Obama administration, yeah, this was more. The Obama administration was trying towards the end of their tenure to inject as much Section 8 rentals into middle to upper class neighborhoods as possible. This is probably their way to get it done. Yeah, that's what I was saying. This is kind of the end game. It's... it's uh, in other words, run the good people out of neighborhoods all the way to the country. Once the trash starts moving in, then repeat the process all over again. Um, the spleen told me in a thread earlier that this talk of inflation is right wing nonsense. So we can go on. I mean, this goes all the way. It goes 14 pages. I'm not here to read uh, Tiger Droppings all night. And so we'll we'll transition uh, back to that. Um uh, Kelly, I mean, does uh, you have always been New World Order type? I know. I don't know if it's New World Order, um, but gosh, something is happening. The millionaires and billionaires are definitely making a move here. I think it's undeniable. Yep, they transitioning into it. They're trying. It's not an easy thing to just, you know take over but <sighs> but nobody's paying attention you know that's that's why i chose to do this topic right because i talked to two or three people today and i was trying to talk to them about this and they were like huh what oh i didn't hear about that i was like y'all didn't hear about blackrock buying a whole neighborhood no we didn't hear about that mm. they bought it for like over asking price, 20% over asking price for like every single family home. No, no, we didn't hear about that. Well, y'all need to hear about it. The media is not covering it. Before yeah. you know it, if you don't have property now, I know a guy, I like I, I told him, I looked him in the eyes, I was like, I know you like doing, you like doing the, the single man thing. Men go their own way, whatever, you're happy, and, and, and you like doing the apartment you better get you some property. You better own you some property, some kind of property, and don't let it go. Buy you some property. That's all we got. Yeah. 
Whew, I know Chris must be feeling good. He said he cut 10 acres today. It's hot. It was hot. You cut 10 <laughs> acres today? Whoo, it was hot. He said he stopped. He had to stop and drink six cold beers to rehydrate. <laughs> it's hot, bro. You can't. Woo. That'll dehydrate you, too. Yeah. You, I hope you drink some you water with that, too. You, I hope you were drinking, like, Coors or, or Natty Light or something that was mostly water anyways, because, well, Lord. I know, you, I know that wasn't Andy Gator. <laughs> I, bet, I bet you didn't have to pee much. You were sweating it all out. Oh, my goodness. It's too hot. It's too hot. It's too hot. Too hot, baby. It's too hot. We know his drawers were soaking wet. Oh. We all sweat. and Look. No, we're not even going to get into that. <laughs> we sweat and we're still fat. <laughs> we're not even. I'm not even going to get into that. Um. Where you can't wear like the nylons, like they make like nylon underwear and all that stuff. If you live down south for most of the year, you can't wear them, but especially not in the summer. You got to wear cotton. You have to wear cotton. Oh, yeah. Cotton's gonna soak up the sweat. That's all I can say about that. You got to wear. You have to have cotton croissants in the summer to soak <laughs> up the sweat. It's just it's the truth. It's the truth. Other than yeah. that, you're gonna get chap chap. And you're going to be walking off funny, and it ain't pretty. Man, that's bad. <laughs> yeah, I used to work in the shop for 10 years, and every summer we would walk up and down and sweat, and uh, your uniform pants would rub on the inside of your thighs, and it would oh, yeah. tap, you so, chap. tap you so bad. Chap, chap. Oh, man. And uh, uh, the sweat would pour into your safety glasses, into your eyes. Burn. And burn all day long, all day long, wiping your eyes. Y'all didn't have AC. Y'all just had those big fans, right? Yeah. In the shade, it was still hot like that. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's... I don't don't miss that part (sighs) of it, too. Man, it it don't give you no break over here. It's just June, ba. August is probably going to be the worst. August is gonna be hell. Oh, man. You ready for that? Lord have you better mercy. Cut, you better cut your grass at night. <laughs> you got to. You bet you, get, at night, you, get you some Q beams on your lawnmower. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one on the front, That's one on each side. That's all. Shoot, get the Q beams out and uh. They sell those new zero turns with some uh, headlights on them. Hey. uh... Chris Ryder said he's going to Miller's Lake in the morning. It's uh, it's, it's, pour- it's free fishing weekend. He said, if you want to go with him, go catch him at Miller's Lake tomorrow. Man, that sounds good. But I'm actually going to pour Barry in the morning. Pour Barry. I'm going with one. I'm going with an older fella, one of my uh, mm. friends' dad. We're going to try to get some catfish and some goo. Who's going to cook that? First we gotta catch it. Then we could think about who's gonna cook it. Oh, you know, no confidence. No oh, confidence. I'm gonna catch him. I'm sure. No confidence. Uh, I'm trying to let me let's pull that up. Right here, you know that Port Barry song is is crazy. And I hadn't fished in Port Barry in a long time. I'm ready to see what's going on. Hmm. See if they still got fish in there. Well, you know, we didn't get flagged last time when we was watching all those YouTube videos, but it was probably not a good idea. We probably shouldn't do that <laughs> again. <laughs> We're gonna get flagged <laughs> and get banned from all kind of different platforms. But I wanted I wanna do this one because you said Port Barry, so I don't know if you know the Port Barry song. It sounds like a song. Mm-hmm. It's a old I don't know what year it came out. Or even what decade. But it's kind of like a Cajun rock and roll song. And it sounds like it came out of Port Barry. Come on. Uh, Port Barry don't have much, but I tell you what. They used to have some good hamburgers at this little truck stop. Man. Some good hamburgers? Oh, yeah. But they don't have the... It's not a uh, truck. 
It's not a burger joint no more. It's what it is? It's business now. Chicken fingers? <laughs> they used I don't to, know where they, I'm going with they that. They used to have that good little place to get burgers and two good bait stands, and that's about it. Kelly, you remember that place we were going? I think it was near Sunset or something. It was a used car lot. They had like two vehicles on it, and one of them was the person working. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Listen to this. Here we go. God damn. How you decide which one they all know about Lord Barry? You better, if you want the other view, you better buy it. Because that's a super alive. All of y'all know about Lord Barry. To catch you there is half of your height. You might as well go on the two come carry. Because you that's a super alive. It's the same as it was in the old days. Yeah, man, I'm playing the song. You can't hear it? Oh. Robbers and preachers like flies on a dump and two person don't know where are your friends. All right. I'm Anyways, I just blow. I just wanted to do that uh, for people on the show just to show them that song. Oh. So okay, that was good. I'm, my bad, dude. <laughs> I don't. I guess you couldn't I'm hear. Ready it. To go to, no. I'm ready to go to Blue Bayou. Blue Bayou. Look at the oh, women. Or, He's ready to go look at the women here. Yeah, yeah. That too. That yeah. too. Too. They got some good Eat ones to look at. Okay, how many of them look good and how many of them uh, don't need to be looked at? <laughs> <laughs> oh. hmm. It's hard to say. It's hard to say. Yeah, they got a lot of big sloppy people over there. Too. <laughs> it depends on what they some Bahama mamas. Look up David Archie <laughs> underwear. Thank me later. Get the ones with the, the I can't say that. Get the one actually I can. It's my show and I want um it, I'll I'll read it. Look up David Archie underwear. Thank me later. Get the ones with the dick pouch. No more swamp crotch. <laughs> <laughs> Specially made for uh, Louisiana summers, I guess. Let's look it up. Let's look it up. I got nothing oh, else damn. to do. We're not going to go uh, too much later tonight. I got a big weekend of uh, nothing oh, ahead of pal. us. What the <laughs> but, uh, yeah, let's look. Uh, David David Archie underwear. So David, but I don't. I gotta be careful now. I'm not gonna show. Does that uh, keep you from getting? Does that keep you from getting blue balls? It keeps you from. I guess it's good for sweat. It's oh, good for okay. sweat. Um, we're gonna go to the official website. I don't want um somebody else wearing them. You know that, and and they doing something nasty or anything. This is a classy program. <laughs> this is a classy program. <laughs> so. Okay, it's just some underwears. Which is the ones with the pouches? It's just saying, so uh, men, you know, it's a hot, it's hot summer. It's, this can help. Oh, look, this one I think separate. It's not called a dick pouch, Chris. It's just called separate pouch briefs. <laughs> <laughs> it's for undersized men. Well, it's to move. It's to get you better covered. It's to soak up more of that sweat, keep you dry, keep you from uh, getting chap and chafing. Yeah, you know, it's getting hot. I just cut the crotch out of my nothing <laughs> in the way. Let the air breathe. Yeah. Hey, well, <laughs> we can't. Uh, we can't all. Uh, you put a cold pack like right here. He said it was the freezer. He said it was the first one. Let me go back. They got it on Amazon. Eat Z. I'll just go look and see what they got on Amazon. But uh, anyways. You, you gotta you gotta cut a hole in the back of your drawers. That way you can let the force out easier. Well yeah, and I, I imagine I imagine Nobody wants to talk about not, this, but I imagine there's a little bit of like particles, right? Every time you fart, there's got to at least be some poop particles <laughs> in the air that get caught in your underwear. Whether the underwear looks totally clean or not, I imagine there's still some particles 
uh, just like when you pee, it, it, it's going to splash in the water. Yeah. You can't see all the particles, but that's going to splash up like 10 feet in the air or something, man. It's going to waft in the in the wind. Uh, bathrooms are dirty places, man. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Really? Oh, yeah. All right. So I'm glad uh, he gave us this recommendation. And uh, that, that'll keep us... Keep us dry. I'm going to definitely have to... Well, I don't want to look at this dude's uh, junk. So, you know, I'm going to get all kind of bad ads now. Every time I'm going to go to a website, it's just going to be... It's going to be a dude from the navel to, like, down. And it's just going to be a big package in my face showing underwear. Showing you what you don't have, <laughs> what you should have. But I'll look oh, into it, man. man. We got to... We got to... Uh, got to look into that. Got to stay dry. I don't want no chafing, man. Oof, that's no good. That don't. That ain't no fun. That ain't no fun. Ain't nobody got time for that. No fun. No. All right, bro. You had fun tonight or what? Oh yeah. Always. I know you worn out. Cut your grass. I can't believe you cut grass today. I got home. I had time to cut grass. I said, "Fuck that." It was hot. It was hot. It was hot in my garage. I can't take it in my garage. I'll be damned if I go outside and try to cut my yard in this shit. No. Mm-hmm. No. I ain't doing it. So uh, I was already I was already tired from hollering at the children half the day, then cut the grass. I, I do before we sign off, I gotta give a big praise to my wife who's like the best ever. She gave me my birthday and Father's Day gift early. Um, oh. And. Some coochie. No. I get that all the time, boy. Um, oh, my bad. <laughs> oh. When no, it was a. Stop, so I was just, it was, I was an, just thinking it was like one. It's a, an acoustic one. Taylor guitar that. That goes for. It's like an $800 guitar. Uh, she got a second hand. Wow. It was second hand. It was used, so obviously it was cheaper. But it's like an eight hundred dollar Taylor acoustic guitar. Um, amazing. So I love her. Uh, it's apparent she loves me. I don't know why. I don't know why. But I apparently I'm doing something I don't right. Know either. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, they're gonna make me Google it. one more thing here. Uh, have you all seen the military ad? U.S., China, Russia, Tick, Talk. Military no. ad. I haven't. No. Haven't seen it. No. It's from. I see some one from Newsweek. Video comparing Russian army versus U.S. Army. Viewed eight hundred thousand times. Is this on like? I don't know if this is. Social media users have mocked U.S. Army's new recruitment campaign. With some noting stark differences between it and advertisement for the Russian military. I don't know if this is... You have to send me a link, man. I don't know if I'm pulling up the right stuff. Um, I guess We'll start to wrap it up, really. Um, my kids want to see the guitar. They haven't seen it yet, so i got to play it for them. I appreciate y'all. Again, last week I was playing Dungeons & Dragons and blacked out halfway through the game. And uh, next week I'm going on vacation. At Orange Beach. So that'll be a lot of fun. So we'll take uh, that Friday off. But I I did want to say this. See, do this video. I wanted to touch on this topic. You can research yourself. I fully recommend you do. Uh, Go back. If you didn't catch the whole video, go back after it's posted and watch it all. If we're a lot of my audience is all the same age as I am. So if you don't have property right now if you don't own it now if you're paying a mortgage you're good but if you're renting right now i it's not financial advice but i'm recommending you find some kind of property and own it cuz i think the goal is for you not to have property Get it now before the getting's gone. That's all I can say. Right? Mm-hmm. Kelly, where are you going fishing? You said, where are you going fishing? Port Barry, man. Port, Port Barry. Barry. Okay. 
You know how to yeah. cook fish? Uh, I never really cooked fish, but I know how. I know yeah, how. Yeah, that's what I thought. I don't remember you ever cooking fish. I know you put them no, crawfish tails in your spaghetti, though. <laughs> yeah. It was good? I tried because uh, it was all right. I mean, it was already peeled, and I was like, what the heck? I'm going to just throw it in my spaghetti. People throw shrimp in the fettuccine and stuff, so I was like, you know what? It was all right. You well, always like to mix it, up your meats, bad. whatever. It's all about that protein, bro. It's all about that protein. What? And you got it. What? Yes, sir. All right. Well, we're going to call an end to this show. Um, take a break. Probably go play that guitar a little bit more. Show my boys. They're going to be excited to see this. They're going to be jealous. I'm going to have to pull down their little kid guitars and uh, make a bunch of noise and upset the neighbors. <laughs> and that's how it goes. It's just my singing. It's that bad. Anyways, Kelly, I appreciate you coming on, hanging out with me on this Friday night. I appreciate uh, Chris and Chris and Chris 10 commenting <laughs> tonight. Everybody's a Chris in one way or another. Love you guys. Yeah. Um, again, the show streaming live on my personal Facebook page. Get here to rumble.com, bitshoot.com, minds.com at John F337. That's J O N F337. And all the pretty much audio versions of podcasts, just search the Line Yop Show. You will get it, man. That's it, Peace. right? Peace.